thank you for your rich gift, and you can be sure it'll be used to the up, up, up building of the church. Uh, I was reading uh, this week uh, in, in, uh, in Isaiah, and I just kept on the line and on. I thought, well, I'm going to share that uh, with those folks in our congregation, and uh, so I'm going to live while I'm on the line. It was, it was uh, if I, my voice could hold up, but uh, God was using uh, Cyrus, uh, King Cyrus, as an agent. He punished his people. He warned them. Uh, they continued to disobey, and he destroyed them. But he kept the remnant, and he promised to bring that remnant back. And he was going to use King Cyrus to, as an agent to, to accomplish that, to bring that portion back to, to Israel. And so I got to reading this, and I, I'm going to read these lines from the prophet Isaiah. It's really very striking, these words. I'm going to go uh, to 45, uh, verse 5. Says, I am the Lord, there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. Then starting with verse 7. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. And then we'll go to 12. It is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hand stretched out the heavens. I marshaled their starry hosts. And I want to 15. Truly, you are a God who hides himself, O God and Savior of Israel. For this is what the Lord says, this is verse 18. He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. Verse 19. I, am not, I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in the land of darkness. I have not said to Jacob's descendants, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, speak the truth. I declare what is right. And then verse 22, Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. Verse 23, By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered, it, uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow. By me every tongue will swear. And then verse 24, they will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. In verse 25. But in the Lord, all the descendants of Israel will be found righteous and will exalt in glory. So we will turn to our brother Jim. Thank you, Dr. Freddy. I'm going to do something a little different today. Turning the hymn books to number 84. And I want you to sing these words. And I want you to consider if you're at that place in your life. I've tried. I'm failing. I'm not happy. I'm going to present myself to you. And you take care of me. It's that simple. As we sing this song to prepare our hearts the message. <laughs> At the end of this service, we're going to give what we call an invitation. Same invitation that was given thousands of years ago. Within the body of Christ, nothing has changed as pertains to eternal salvation. God has said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Governments change, people change, seasons change, but he said, I never change. I want you to turn your hymn books at the close of this service, and we're going to give an invitation. By this time, if your heart is right, if your heart is willing and you have surrendered to God, you have the two other things that you must do. You must confess that Jesus is the Christ before men. And he said, if you'll do that, I'll confess you before my Father. And then you need to be baptized for the remission of sin. We need to be buried into Christ in baptism. And we go down and everything that we've ever done thought of sin. Is buried in that water and we come out a new creature in Christ. If you're ready to tackle life today through a new avenue, 
If you're tired of spinning your wheels, you're tired of where you're at, you're tired of what's going on in your life, and you deserve to be happy, provided it is entrusted to God, then you're ready to do that. Think on these things as I bring the message. Turn in the hymn books, if you will, if we take a moment. The good old song of the church. We present ourselves to God. Here I am. This is who I am. This is what I need. And I present myself to you <coughs> to change my life. I want to go for just a few minutes this morning in the book of Proverbs, second chapter. I got into Proverbs a little bit uh, last night. Read that book. It is so chock full of common sense and knowledge that you're going to be amazed of what it can do for your life as an individual. Now, I said last night, I'm going to preach about me today. You, and, and people might say, well, well. I'm going to preach about me because I am you and you are me. We're all brothers and sisters in tribulation in the cycle of life passing from death until the final judgment of God. We all face the same things. And so I want to talk just a little bit about wisdom and knowledge. In the second chapter he said, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments in thee, so that thou incline thy ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. He said, if. If is a conditional word. How many of you in your life can go back and say, man, if I'd have done that, if I'd have done this, if I hadn't have done that, if I hadn't have done this, it is a life-altering situation wrapped up in two little letters of a word. On the judgment day of God, where we say, if, I had have listened if I had applied that to my life. If. If. Listen to what he says. If there was nobody on this earth but me and God and everybody else and everything else was gone, I would still have to answer him. There's a judgment day of God coming upon this world whether we like it, whether we agree with it, or disagree with it. God has now pulled back the hand of God to give people time. Time to straighten our lives up. Trying to quit doing the things that we're doing. We're hurting people. We're saying things that we shouldn't say. And when I say we, brother, I incorporate the body of Christ. There's one little simple passage, and I shared it with you, I think, maybe it's on my fourth Sunday. What was it? One simple little thing to master in life and turn this world around, and we can't even do that because we're trying to do it in ourselves, and we're not solely entrusting in the power of God. Do unto others as you would that they what? Come on, say it. We need to loosen up a little bit. I'm out of the old school of where when the Spirit of God speaks to your heart, you turn it loose and it ebbs out as an ebb current in water and it affects life around you. We need to get back to the old time preaching and the old time gospel that brought me to Christ. I stood before him condemned. You stand before him condemned. You and I are alike. We're brothers and sisters in the tribulations of life. I'd reached the age in my life when I was not a good person. <coughs> I've always said, I don't care what you say about me if you'll tell the truth. Say what you will about me, my character, my actions, this, I don't care. Just tell the truth. How do others see me? How do others see you? How do they react to what they see in us? I am you, and you are me within the body of Christ. 
Yea, it is said in verse 3, If thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding. Let me ask you something today. What would happen, I'm going to get on the level of thinking, this is where we live, this is our house, this is the world we live in. I'm going to put a product on the market, but I'm not going to tell you nothing about it. I'm just going to say, try it, you'll like it. There's a part of us that says, yeah, maybe. Is that where we're failing today within the body of Christ? Are we failing to excite people and tell people about the peace and satisfaction that comes to you tonight when you lay down if you never open your eyes in the morning? Christians take things for granted. God has been good to me. I remember right in this very house 50-something years ago when I said to myself, I'm tired. I'm beat down. I'm ready for something new. And the old man of God stood up here and said, Try it, you'll like it. And I did. And I've never been sorry of that. About 3 o'clock this afternoon, I'm going down to <coughs> do a service. And I'm going to say my earthly goodbyes to an old friend. I've done a lot of services in my life. I've watched people pass in front of the casket. And I try not to form opinions, but I'd almost guarantee you that 80% of the people that passed by said, if I had done that, if I had not have mistreated this person, if I had loved this person more, I'll tell you exactly when my dad lay and I had given my dad a lot of problems in life, things that I'd done he didn't want me to do. I didn't get the chance to tell him that. But when I passed in front of him, I made a commitment, I will change my life. What's it going to take you? What's it going to take you to get there? If a man's living in sin or a woman's living in sin, they haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ, they know it. It used to bother me when I first went into the ministry and I was spinning my wheels of why everybody wasn't a Christian. And I said, Jimmy, it's none of your business. Preach the word. Let God take care of that. Amen? Amen, Amen. Chester? Let God take care of that. I don't interfere in God's plan. I don't try to tell him how to run his business. I don't try to tell him who's in heaven and who's in hell. That is his prerogative. And I can take care of me. And I become you. You should want to take care of yourself. Some of you are starting a family. Do you know how to do that? Some of you have a family. You know how to love them? You see, absolutely I love them. Not until you share with them the love of God that's in you. <coughs> in our life, there should be no pretense. I am you and you are me, and what you see is what you get. I'm not going to come out Monday morning and be a different Jimmy Adkins. I'm going to consider others' feelings. Would I want them to do what I am telling them? Would I do that? It's time, folks. It's time. And we quit hurting each other. Because when we do that, we hurt ourselves. I'm like the old fellow was one time that... Their armies were losing battles. They were losing battle, battle after battle. And somebody got concerned and said, go out and see what's happening to us. Why we're we losing the battle? And the wise old soldier come back and said, I have met the enemy. And he is us. I am my own worst enemy when I doubt. When I do not have my life totally in compatibility with God, I pay the price for it. 
in unhappiness. There's a little thing after a lot of study and stuff, and I, you, you know, people come and say, well, this is this is this. And I say, look, not my sin. Not my sin. The world may be going to hell in a handbasket. Not my sin. It'll not come by my hands. You are me. And I am you. What is good for me will certainly be good for you. What is good for you will be good for me. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for he for her as hid treasures, then shall thy understanding the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. First prophets that said, you have nothing to fear, do not fear God. He loves everybody, and he does. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. But God hates sin. God could love me and yet hate what I was doing, and that was the case in my life. God loved me enough to reveal himself to me through the word of God. <coughs> that it changed my life. That's what we are. Man. A change of life. I always tell people, and, and, and I've tried to do nothing lightly, but think about it a minute. Try it. If you don't like it, you can go back to sinning. You go back to saying all horrible things and doing all kinds of things and, and everything that you do. If you don't like this way of life, go back. Whoa. See, I'm not worried anymore. I love people and I love to preach to them, but it's God's prerogative who's going to fill up heaven or hell. It is not mine. I am you. And you are me. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buffer to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. Then shall thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. And when wisdom entereth into thine heart, not the pump, not the pump, Right here is where it enters in. Wisdom enters in. Quit doing that to yourself. Quit hurting yourself. Quit torturing yourself. Quit doing things that brings reproach upon you and, and make it a hate of people. Quit it. Have that wisdom of God to come into your head. Now, my sin. It is not my sin what others do. It is not my sin what others say. It is not my sin. I am you. And you are me. Knowledge is pleasant unto the soul. Man, what a peace of mind. The world's hammering me, Lord. Everything's hammering me. Just give me a little peace. He says, okay, you got to do what I said. And I'll give you some peace. I'll give you rest to your mind. I will help you handle the burdens of life. And we might say, well, Lord, I've made a lot of mistakes. Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. There were many times I had thought I had done what I needed to do and I got back right in the same old thing and then one day I got it right. One day I got it right and I knew it was for me. It is forever. Because he lives in our mind. 
Discretion shall pervert, preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. When thou leaves the path of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness, your decision, that's one of the things that's wrong in our world today. People that have never committed to Christ, have never lived that life, won't man up. And it takes a good man or woman to step out of your seat. Amen, Ronnie Pilgrim? <coughs> yeah. Step up this aisle. People got the misconcept that you have to come up here and all oh, this say everything I've done. Don't do that. Somebody may shoot you. <laughs> that good confession, brother, comes right here at the end of your walk. I've reached that place in my life. Repentance should have already started this morning with those songs and, and with the Spirit of God. Repentance should have already started. All you got to do now is finish it. You might have said, well, I've been raised in a Christian home. That won't cut it. That won't cut it, gentlemen. You may have a good Christian mom and dad. Won't cut it. <coughs> won't get it. It's what we do. <coughs> For we shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, there to give an account of the deeds done in the body. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. There is none good, no not one. I am you and you are me. In the balance of life, we're one. And hopefully, in Christ Jesus. To deliver thee from the way of evil man, from the man that speaketh forward things. If you're a Christian this morning, quit gossiping. Quit saying things that hurt. <coughs> Live an example so that the unbeliever can, can say, hey, I would like to do that. And you say, well, now, that don't happen in church. Absolutely it happens in the church. That's another thing that we need to get burned up on about. And only then we will admit where we're at. That's the reason I said, I don't care what you say about me, if you tell the truth, just tell the truth. And if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I will be that the rest of my life, a sinner saved by grace. I can live with that. I can sleep with that. I can walk with that. I can talk with that. I can do all things through Christ and strengthen it to me. <coughs> Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and they forward in their paths, to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger which flattereth her with words, which forsake the guidance of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. What do you think your children's going to have when you're gone near? Have you committed to a better way of life, something that brings some joy and happiness and some guidance? Or have you tossed it to the wind and said, let that generation take care of themselves? That won't fly with God. That will not fly with God. Train up a child in the way that it should go, and when it is old, it will not depart. We're commanded to train. And after a certain age, young people, you're on your own. You can't tug at mom and dad's shirt tail and coat tail and ride them into heaven. <coughs> You've got to stand on your own feet. You've got to man up. And you've got to admit who you are. I am you. And you are me. Which forsake the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. For her house is inclined unto death and her pass unto death. 
Death is a reality, and we need to be talking about it. We need to be preaching about it. It could happen to anybody five minutes from now or 30 seconds. And we think we're so big and strong and we've got all the answers, and yet we fear that. You know why we fear it? It's out of our hands. It's out of control. That is the prerogative of God. Blessed are they that die in the Lord from here, from henceforth, saith the Spirit. They do rest from their works, and their labors do follow them. Or their, they rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. See what I'm saying? I'm you. And you're me. We're all brothers in tribulation. <clears throat> As I close, for the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. There is another place, there is another time, just beyond the veil that God has drawn down. That is so blissful. I can't even describe it. And we're all headed in that direction. Whether we're ready or whether we're not ready. <coughs> we need to think about that. I want to give you an illustration. A lot of times what happens. Somebody gets sick and somebody preach or goes to the hospital. I'm going to preach to you now before I come and see you in the hospital. His parishioner got dead. Preacher walked up to him one day and said, I am so very happy that I came to talk to you in the hospital. He said, Preacher, what are you talking about? I didn't even remember it. If I put that off to that, and that's all I've got to offer God, <clears throat> I'd be ashamed. Now that's hard. This is bare knuckle. We're talking about it. We're talking about changing lives. We're talking about shocking people out of sin into eternal life through the Word of God. But the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. If I would consider those two pictures that were set before me today, two ways of life, I'd strongly consider change if I need. If I was a Christian here today and I'm not as happy in my salvation as I once was, you need to get the spark back and be like David. He said, Lord, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. If I can't be a happy Christian, I ain't going to spin my wheels at something else. I'm you. You're me. We're going to stand and sing this song, amen? And, and it feels so good. Stand before God and say, yes, yes, I am. I don't have a plea. I don't have a chance. <laughs> I I'm going to ask you to come forward. I'm going to ask you to get out of your seat. I'm going to ask you to come up here. And if it be the will of God, you'll do it. And if not, I've done my job. I've done my job. Let's all stand together. Be very much in prayer.